shortly after that we start the meetings. Mr. Yeah, just القدس من الآن وإلى الأبد. Grant us, O Lord, the resplendent colors of your compassion and mercy to paint in our hearts the image of your hanging on the cross out of love between two thieves, when we will have imprinted the awesome vision of your passion in our spirits, then we will be worthy to, of the glory of your resurrection and the gift of your grace, and we shall worship and praise you for your mercy toward us with your Father and your Holy Spirit now and forever.
Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the heavenly peacemaker who was hung on the wood of the cross. He opened his arms and gathered all peoples and nations. The Lord became flesh by his cross, has saved the world. He received true glory and worship from all corners of the earth. The good shepherd who showed his goodness to his flock by caring for his sheep, he proved how much he loved them by offering himself to the good one be glory and honor all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. We worship, thank, and praise your divinity, O God, for you created us in your image and formed us in your likeness. We praise your salvation, O oh lover of all people. On this Friday you gave us life by your cross and set us free by your death. In the beginning, you completed our creation on a Friday, the sixth day. Your holy hands formed mortal Adam from the dust of the earth, and you molded and created him in your image. From your own mouth, you breathed the breath of life into him. Thus, he was fashioned in beauty and perfected in knowledge, a marvelous creation. But in his ignorance, Adam wandered neglected your command and was delivered up to judgment. Death now entered to distort the image of your creation. But even after this, O oh, compassion and loving Lord, your mercy prevailed. On the sixth day, another Friday filled with mysteries, your hands were nailed to the cross. You were humiliated and mocked, and your sight pierced in order to give new life to the work of your hands through the blood and water which flowed from your side. On this Friday of your saving passion and the commemoration of your life-giving cross, the church petitions you through the mouth of her children with the fragrance of this incense, as in the beginning you created out of love and then returned to save and give new life. Now grant your mercy upon us, the work of your creation, by your cross, grant peace to the whole universe. By your cross, remove anger and put an end to wars. By your cross, eliminate dissension. By your cross, curb violence and pacify the angry. By your cross, humble the proud, expose the self-serving and remove the enemy. By your cross, establish your church in strength and make her monasteries and convents firm. By your cross, purify your priests and exalt the deacons. By your cross, sustain the elderly, subdue the haste of youth, and educate the young. By your cross, pardon sinners, forgive wrongdoers, and guard your flock, which now worships you, honors your passion, embraces your wounds, and is glorified and exalted by your crucifixion. Save us and save all your people, Completely perfect us in your strength. Visit us and revive us so that our image may be renewed and our likeness recovered. May your comfort take away the sadness of our hearts and your compassion dry out our tears. Then we shall wear your glory and be clothed in your light. Make us worthy to meet the day of your resurrection as heirs into the kingdom. Then without ceasing, we shall raise glory to you now and forever. Amen.
Lord and High Priest, fragrant incense of forgiveness, you offered yourself on the wood of the cross for foolish sinners. You sacrificed yourself for our sake. Now, O Lord, accept the death of our guilt and save us from retribution. Remove the scourge of anger and all suffering from us. Encourage us with your joyful hope and your healing remedy. In your compassion, pardon the faithful departed, and we shall praise you with them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. من آمن بما سمع منا ولمن أعلنت ذراع الرب فإنه ينبت كفرخ أمامه وكجرثومة من أرض قاحلة لا صورة له ولا بهاء فننظر إليه ولا منظر فنشتهيه مزدرا ومخذول من الناس رجل أوجاع ومتمرس بالعهات ومثل ساتر وجهه عنا مزدرا فلم نعبأ به إنه لقد أخذ عهاتنا وحمل أوجاعنا فحسبناه ذا برس مضروبا من الله ومذللا شرح لأجل معاصينا وصحق لأجل آثامنا فتأديب سلامنا عليه وبشدخه شفينا كلنا ضللنا كالغنم كل واحد مال إلى طريقه فألقى الرب عليه إثم كلنا قدم وهو خاضع ولم يفتح فاه كشات سيق إلى الذبح وكحمل صامت أمام الذين يجزونه ولم يفتح فاه من الضيق والقضاء أخذ ومن يصف مولده إنه قد انقطع من أرض الأحياء ولأجل معصية شعبي أصابته الضربة فمنح المنافقين بقبره والأغنياء بموته لأنه لم يصنع جورا ولم يوجد في فمه مكر والرب رضي أن يسحقه بالعهات فإنه إذا جعل نفسه دبيحة إثم يرى ذرية وتطول أيامه ومرضات الرب تنجح على يده لأجل عناء نفسه يرى ويشبع وبعلمه يبرر الصديق عبد كثيرين وهو يحمل آثامهم فلذلك أجعل الكثيرين نصيبا له والأعزاء غنمته لأنه أفاض للموت نفسه وأحسي مع العصاة 
وهو حمل خطايا كثيرين وشفع في العصات A reading from the prophet Daniel. I was still praying to the Lord, my God, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, presenting my petition concerning the holy mountain of my God. I was still praying when the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in vision before, came to me in flight at the time of the evening offering. He instructed me in these words. Daniel, I have now come to give you understanding. When you began your petition, an answer was given, which I have come to announce, because you are beloved. Therefore, mark the answer and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are decreed for your people and for your holy city. Then transgression will stop and sin will end. Guilt will be expiated. Everlasting justice will be introduced. Vision and prophecy ratified. And a holy of holies will be anointed. Know and understand from the utterance of the word that Jerusalem was to be rebuilt until there is an anointed ruler. There shall be seven weeks. In the course of 62 weeks, it shall be rebuilt with squares and trenches in time of affliction. After the 62 weeks, an anointed one shall be cut down with no one to help him. And the people of a leader who will come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. His end shall come in a flood until the end of the war which is decreed there will be desolation. For one week he shall make a firm covenant with the many. Half the week he shall abolish sacrifice and offering. In their place shall be the desolating abomination until the ruin that is decreed is poured out among, upon the desolator. قراءة من سفر النبي ميخا هكذا قال الرب على الأنبياء الذين يضلون شعبي ويعضون بأسنانهم وينادون بالسلام ومن لا يلقمهم في أفواههم يشنون عليه حربا مقدسا لذلك يكون لكم الليل دون رؤيا والظلمة دون عرافا وتغرب الشمس على الأنبياء ويظلم عليهم النار فيخزى الراؤون ويخجل العرافون وجميعهم يلثمون شفاههم لأنه ليس جواب من الله لكن امتلأت قوة بروح الرب وحقا وبأسا لأخبر يعقوب بمعصيته وإسرائيل بخطيئته اسمعوا هذا يا رؤساء بيت يعقوب وكواد بيت إسرائيل الذين يمقطون الحق ويعوجون كل استقامة الذين يبنون صهيون بالدماء وأرشاليم بالظلم إنما رؤساؤها يحكمون بالرشوة وكهنتها يعلمون بالأجرة وأنبياؤها يمارسون العرافة بالفضة ويعتمدون على الرب قائلين أليس الرب في وسطنا فلا تحل بنا الشرور لذلك بسببكم ستحرث صهيون كحقل وتصير أرشاليم أطلالا وجبل البيت مشارف غاب A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. But if, in seeking to be justified in Christ, 
we ourselves are found to be sinners. In Christ then, is Christ then a minister of sin? Of course not. But if I am building up against those things that I tore down, then I show myself to be a, a transgressor. For through the law I died to the law, that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live. No longer I, but Christ lives in me. In so far as I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who has loved me and given himself up for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if justification comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. O stupid Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? I want to learn only this from you. Did you receive the spirit from works of the law or from faith in what you heard? Are you so stupid? After beginning with the spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain, does then the one who supplies the spirit, you and works mighty deeds among you, do so from works of the law or from faith in what you heard? Thus, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Realize then that it is those who have faith who are children of Abraham. Scripture, which saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, foretold the good news to Abraham, saying, Through you shall all nations be blessed. Consequently, those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, who had faith. For all who depend on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not persevere in doing all the things written in the book of the law, and that no one is justified before God by the law is clear. For the one who is righteous by faith will live. But the law does not depend on faith. Rather, the one who does these things will live by them. Christ ransomed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might be extended to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. قراءة من أعمال الرسل وبعد بضعة أيام قدم قيصرية الملك أجريبا وبرنكا فسلما على فاستوس ومكثا فيها مدة فعرض فاستوس على الملك قضية بولس وقال هنا رجل تركه فيليكس سجينا فلما كنت في أورشليم شكاه إلى عظماء كهنة اليهود وشيوخهم وطلبوا الحكم عليه فأخ... فأجبتهم ليس من عادة الرومانيين أن يحكموا على أحد لإرضاء الناس قبل أن يتقابل المتهم ومتهموه ويتسنى له الرد على الاتهام فجاءوا معي إلى هنا فلم أتوان البتة بل جلست في اليوم الثاني على كرسي القضاء وأمرت بإحضار الرجل فلما قابله متهموه لم يذكروا له أي تهمة من التهم الخبيثة التي كنت أتوهمها وإنما كان بينهم وبينه مجادلات في أمور ترجع إلى ديانتهم وإلى امرأ اسمه يسوع قد مات وبولس يزعم أنه حي فحرت عند جدالهم في هذه الأمور فسألته أيريد الذهاب إلى أورشليم ليحاكم فيها على هذه الأمور ولكن بولس 
رفع دهو دعواه طالبا أن يحفظ أمره لحكم جلاده فأمرت أن يحفظ في السجن إلى أن أبعث به إلى قيصر فقال أجريبا لفاستوس وددت لو أني سمعت أنا أيضا هذا الرجل قال غدا تسمعه وفي الغد جاء أجريبا وبارنكا في أبهة ظاهرة فدخلا المحكمة يحيط بهما القواد ووجهاء المدينة فأمر فاستوس بإحضار بولس فأحضر فقال فاستوس أيها الملك أجريبا ويا جميع الحاضرين معنا ترون هذا الرجل الذي سعت به عندي جماعة اليهود كلها في أورشليم وها هنا وهم يصيحون لا يجوز أن يبقى هذا الرجل حيا على أني تبينت أنه لم يفعل ما يستوجب به الموت ولكنه رفع دعواه إلى جلالته فعزمت أن أبعث به إليه وليس لدي أي شيء أكيد في شأنه فأكتب به إلى السيد فأحضرته أمامكم وأمام وأمامك خصوصا أيها الملك جريبا لأحصل بعد استجوابه على شيء أكتبه لأني أرى غير معقول أن أبعث بسجين من غير أن أبين ما عليه من تهم فقال أجريبا لبولس يؤذن لك أن تتكلم في شأنك فبسط, يوسف فبسط بولس يده وشرع في دفاعه A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be dislocated but healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for that holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one be deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter roots spring up and cause trouble, to which many may become defiled, that no one be an immoral or profane person, like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that later, when he wanted to inherit his father's blessing, he was rejected because he found no opportunity to change his mind, even though he sought the blessings with tears. You have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire and gloomy darkness, and storm, and a triumph, and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them for they could not bear to hear the command. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so fearful was the spectacle that Moses said, I am terrified and trembling. قراءة من الرسالة إلى العبرانيين فلنتمسك بإيماننا لأن لنا في يسوع ابن الله رئيس كهنة عظيما اجتاز السماوات ورئيس كهنتنا غير عاجز عن أن يشفك على ضعفنا وهو الذي خضع مثلنا لكل تجربة ما عدا الخطيئة فنتقدم بثقة إلى عرش واهب النعمة لننال رحمة ونجد نعمة تعيننا عند الحاجة خلاصي 
قراءة من إنجيل القديس متى فمضى جنود الحاكم بيسوع إلى دار الحاكم وجمعوا عليه الكتيبة كلها فجردوه من ثيابه وجعلوا عليه رداء قرمزيا وضفروا إقليلا من شوك ووضعوه على رأسه وجعلوا في يمينه قضبة ثم جثوا أمامه وسخروا منه فقالوا السلام السلام عليك يا ملك اليهود وبصقوا عليه وأخذوا القصب وجعلوا يضربونه بها على رأسه وبعدما سخروا منه نزعوا عنه الرداء وألبسوه ثيابه وساقوه ليصلب وبينما هم خارجون صادفوا رجلا قيرانيا اسمه سمعان فسخروه أن يحمل صليب يسوع ولما وصلوا إلى المكان الذي يقال له جلجثة أي مكان الجمجمة ناولوه خمرا ممزوجة بمرارة ليشربها فذاقها وأبى أن يشربها فصلبوه ثم اقتسموا ثيابه مقترعين عليها وجلسوا هناك يحسونه ووضعوا فوق رأسه علة الحكم عليه كتب فيها هذا يسوع ملك اليهود صلب معه لسان أحدهما عن عن اليمين والآخر عن الشمال A reading from the Gospel of St. Mark Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. قراءة من إنجيل القديس لوكا وكان أحد المجرمين المصلوبين يجدف عليه قائلا إن كنت أنت المسيح فخلص نفسك وإيانا فأجاب الآخر وانتهره قائلا أما تخشى الله وأنت مشترك في هذا القصاص أما نحن فبعدل لأن نلنا ما تستجبه أعمالنا وأما هذا فلم يصنع شيئا من السوء ثم قال ليسوع يا رب اذكرني متى جئت في ملكوتك فقال له يسوع الحق أقول لك إنك اليوم تكون معي في الفردوس A reading from the Gospel of St. John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary of Cleopas and Mary Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a spring of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Please be seated. The name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good evening, everyone. 
<clears throat> I think I spent uh, quite a few hours preparing and writing a homily, and then I had second thoughts, so I changed it around, and then I said, I'm going to just put it away. So i uh, say a little prayer that hopefully you can get something out of my rambling, you know, it comes out. What uh, really uh, was coming to my mind very strongly over the past few days, uh, thinking about the scene of the cross, were the two thieves. It's really, it's really amazing because it seems like these two thieves knew each other. We call them thieves, but they couldn't have been just thieves. They, they, they did something very bad. Maybe they killed somebody, who knows? But the good thief said, we receive the punishment that corresponds to our crime. So that's a capital crime. So they must have committed some big, you know, crime. It's just that what's amazing is that you have this bad thief, let's say. He was hanging on the cross dying okay he's dying on the cross he doesn't know Jesus from Adam Jesus never said anything about bad about him at all he's probably the only one in his all his whole life that never said anything bad about him and still hanging on the cross dying he reviles Jesus and makes fun of him if you are the Son of God, ha ha ha, get up from the cross and get us out of this too. What goes into a person's mind to be that far gone that on the cross dying, he would have this kind of attitude? Man. We see it in some ways all the time. People just heading straight into a train in their life, just a wreck, just straight ahead of them and they go right towards it. Why they choose to live like that, it's really odd. Then we say, well, maybe they had this kind of life or this kind of life. But then you have the other thief the exact same crime, same kind of mentality, he chose to go the other way completely. That other thief was the only one anywhere, anywhere around that stood up for Jesus and defended him. Wow, it's really something. And he did that with his hands nailed to the cross completely helpless and yet he was the only one that was trying to defend Jesus how wonderful when Jesus' grace touches somebody in some ways we're all those we're, we're all some of those characters you know these, these thieves us sinners Right? They're sinners. We're sinners, not to that degree, hopefully. But, but still, you know, bad enough where we feel guilty enough where sometimes we just give up on life. And sometimes that guilt really does lead us to destruction. But then sometimes we can handle that guilt in a different way by just saying, okay, I am guilty, I deserve it, but you are good and merciful. Help me. Today, you will be with me in paradise. That gift is extended to us. Now, it all depends on which way we're going to go. Was Jesus God? Play along with me. Was Jesus God? Yes. Who would say no? 
one person. Okay, it's kind of a, sometimes it's a hard question for some people because you think, okay, God is Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So maybe there's three parts to God. Well, no, the actual, I, I know I went off completely from a different subject, but I told you this would happen, right? So play along with me. So, okay, so the three persons, the Trinity, are not three parts of God. All three are fully God. The Father is fully God, the Son is fully God, the Holy Spirit is fully God. The only difference between them is that the Father begets but is not begotten, the Son is begotten but does not beget, and the Holy Spirit is breathed or proceeds. And this is eternal. This is in eternity. This is not in time, so it doesn't... It doesn't mean like, okay, now there's a father and he had a son. No, it doesn't work like that. It's eternal. So, the son, the second person of the Trinity, came down and became human for our salvation, right? So that means that he, as the son of God, is fully God. And yet, he took on a crea created human body and soul. But who he was, was God, the Son of God. Right? Okay. So, <clears throat> he had two natures. He was fully human and fully divine. So, what am I? I am human, right? What is Jesus? He is human, and He is divine, divine nature. Who is He? He is the living Son of God. He is the Son of God. The who is Son of God. So, the Son of God came down took flesh, human body and soul, and in his taking on the human body and soul, he united the, his divinity and, his, and the humanity together. His divinity and humanity, he took to himself, he united together, but in a way where it's not uh, mixed like wine and water, but instead it's harmonious. So there's, there's a full unity between his humanity and his divinity, and that unity happens in the person of Jesus Christ. So, now the next question. It's a hard question. Did God die? Huh, it's almost, it's almost fit. Some say yes, no, some say yes. Did God die? Oh, that's a tough one, okay. Okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What happens, what happens when we die? Okay, but we're... Wait, wait, wait. What happens when we die? Our souls? Do we, our souls continue? Yes. Or we're just dead, dead? Yes. Okay, our souls continue, right? But we die, right? But we're still alive, huh? So what's the difference? So it means that our body died. So what happens here? Our soul is separated from our body. And that's the state of death, right? So... The church teaches that God died. Okay? So what does that mean? Does it mean that he's annihilated? No, of course not. Just like when we die, we're not annihilated. Right? We're still existing. So it's, in, it's necessary to say God died because, of course, he's not annihilated, he's still 
continues, God, uh, his divinity doesn't get annihilated and neither does our soul get annihilated, no. So we continue and of course God continues, but what happened was he was separated from his body. That is his body. The body of Jesus is his body that he took. He was separate from his body and so the Son of God died. God died. He was separate from his body, but of course he didn't stop existing. He's God. Okay? So that's, that's a hard one. But it's necessary in order for us to, to understand it is necessary for us to have a good relationship with Jesus. To understand this. This is why I'm bringing all of this up. Because if he is truly God, that means every action of his that he did on earth has eternal value. Every little thing he did is for eternity, has uh, immeasurable value. And because he's eternal, he can be present to us from every point in his life from his conception, from his childhood, from his youth years, and his young adult years. He didn't get older than that. He can be present from every point in his life to every point in our life. Isn't that amazing? Now, and here's the beautiful part. I mean, it's all beautiful, but this is what's amazing for our own life. We can be present to Him mystically. By mystically, I mean through prayer, through deep prayer. We can be mystically present to Him from every point of our life to any point in His life that we want to be. Wow, yes. This is why. Well, if he's in the garden and he's asking his disciples, stay up with me for one hour, and they can, they're too sleepy, they, they, they can't. You can do that. You can spend that time with him, mystically, and console him. You console him by saying, Lord, I know you did this for me. I'm giving up my sin. I'm giving up this part. I want to be like you. And that consoles him in the garden. On the cross, he's on the cross. You can come and kneel down before him on the cross. And there is a thief here and a thief there. And people passing by. And his mother is there. You can come right by them mystically in prayer. And worship him. Do you know that, do you know that this is what we do on Sunday at the altar? When we're here at the altar. This is exactly what we do. When we offer the Holy Eucharist, there is a moment there where we are supposed to come mystically into the presence of the cross. And then after that, there's a moment where we come mystically in His resurrected presence. And we celebrate. So, okay, I'm done. So I'm, let, me, let me figure out how to wrap it up. I know I kept you, but... So, <clears throat> today, Good Friday, let's think about our life. Let's think about how we can come closer to Him. Now that we know all this, how we can pray more deeply and increase our spiritual life with this knowledge. Blessings to you. We have a white Lexus blocking the gate where we're going to pass through with the procession. Okay, so it's a white Lexus. We need it moved before we start the procession, please. Thank you.
going to get ready to go in procession. Just like we did on Palm Sunday, we were going to go out the main doors and then around the building and then back through. So uh, please this time, you know, it takes a long time just for all of us to squeeze through there. Some of you can go from this side door. Some can go from these doors here. If they can be opened, then it'll help everyone to flow out. And uh, please wait for all of us to go out and then please follow us out. After the service, we're going to hear confessions. I'll be in the confessional, and Father Wadi will be in the cry room here, hearing confessions. I want to remind you that Easter, we have three liturgies. One is in, at night at 11.30 p.m., and the other two are same times in the morning, 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m.
Sulkau 
the liturgy will continue after this with the adoration of the cross after which there will be there is a potluck meal in the hall
after the metne and the final blessing, you're all welcome, invited to come up to reverence the relic of the true cross. Lord Jesus, we worship you for you have filled the world with the fragrance of your incense. Your cross is a spiritual censer and creation has been reconciled to your Father by its fragrant smoke. But in place of a fiery coal, there is your blood. And rather than fragrant smoke, there is your love. The smoke which rose from your cross was offered to your Father through the priesthood of your human nature. Now accept this incense from our unworthy hands. Grant forgiveness to all your flock and eternal rest to the faithful departed now and forever. Amen. She let the hollow She hold this lip the hollow She hold this lip the hollow cross of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. May the memory and the power of his holy passion dwell in your hearts. May the mark of his spotless cross protect you from all your enemies. Bismillah. Amen. Amen. Amen.